high living faith uniting church family and also anybody else who's joining us to watch this video welcome to the service just to say to you that at the end of the service i'm going to be doing a communion um, online for the first time um, and so you may want to stop the video right now and grab some bread and water or juice or wine whatever your preference is um, and we'll share in communion after the sermon otherwise you can stop the video at the end of the sermon and then grab those items before i start i would like to commend our worship team who have been doing an incredible job of firstly recording some of our familiar songs but also each week choosing songs that go with the sermon and so i really want to thank the worship team and everybody involved in that for really enhancing our service every week i'd now like to start with a prayer which is in fact a hymn that was written by gw briggs so you might want to close your eyes and focus on the words or just listen in it's entitled in christ all races meet and we certainly find that true at the moment with the coronavirus situation where every nation has been affected none are immune to what is happening in the world so in christ all races meet christ is the world's true light it's captain of salvation the day star shining bright to every person and nation new life new hope awakes wherever people own his sway freedom their bondage breaks and night is turned to day in christ all races meet their ancient feuds forgetting the whole round world complete from sunrise to its setting when Christ is enthroned as Lord, people shall forsake their fear. Lord Jesus, we ask you to remove all mental, emotional and spiritual hindrances so that our lives can be illuminated by your truths during this message. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Our Bible reading today is taken from John 3 verses 1 to 10 and I'm reading from the New Revised Standard Version. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into their mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and the Spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I say to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with the spirit Nicodemus said to him how can these things be Jesus answered him are you a teacher of Israel and yet you do not understand these things this is the word of the Lord today we're going to explore the concept of human control can we as humans control anything are we powerless to outside circumstances or do we have choices? We're going to be looking deeply at these questions today. So often in life we are thrust into a situation where we feel we have no control over what is happening to us. We may hit 
an unexpected illness, for example, and it feels like we have lost all control. Or we may be facing a job loss right now in this coronavirus situation. And that may, feel, that may leave us feeling like the carpet has been pulled from beneath us. Most of the world currently is in lockdown due to COVID-19. This may make us feel like someone has taken our power away from us. Someone has taken our control away from us. We may feel that we've been forced into a situation where we have no choices. Perhaps the situation has affected your business or your family in ways that you never expected. Are you feeling powerless today? The passage, John 3 verses 1 to 10, raises a question about who God is in the midst of our doubts, in the midst of our uncertainties, and during the times that we feel powerless, who is God during those times? We may know that he's with us, but who is he during those times? Nicodemus had physically seen Jesus. He had even spoken to Jesus in the flesh. He had witnessed Jesus' miracles, but still he did not wholeheartedly believe in who Jesus is. Perhaps we have forgotten the role of Jesus in our lives and the role he has played previously when we go through times of uncertainty and doubt. We heard this in John 3 verses 2. He came, that's Nicodemus, he came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God. Now notice how Nicodemus admits that Jesus is from God, but later on doubts. Anyway, let's get back to the text. For no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Nicodemus must be commended for something. He tries to solve his doubts by coming to the source of wisdom. Who is Jesus? The symbolic meaning of his nighttime visits with Jesus actually refers to the darkness that imbued his life. It seems from the passage that he was taking time out from the darkness to move towards the light of Jesus. Perhaps moving towards becoming a believer or a follower of Jesus. We certainly get that impression from the passage. Night time in the context of Nicodemus' visits may not refer to him visiting Jesus at night out of fear in case the Jewish authorities saw him, but rather he comes at night because he seeks uninterrupted dialogue with Jesus. Uninterrupted dialogue with Jesus. I want us to think about this in the context of our world that is plagued with coronavirus at this time. COVID-19 certainly seems like a darkness that has crept into every home and every nation around the world. Now we can either view the situation in a fearful way where we believe we have absolutely no control or we can see the situation of COVID-19 as an opportunity. We may feel powerless because we have to stay in our homes, but the reality is we still have choices. For example, this period of time gives us a chance to have uninterrupted dialogue with Jesus. So often life is so busy that we don't get those opportunities that are uninterrupted, lengthy periods of time where we can dialogue with Jesus. In his book, Time for God, Leslie Weatherhead writes that, he writes this, Time is a room in which many things happen. Time is a room in which many things happen. 
The time that we have available in our homes during the lockdown phase can be a time where many things happen between us and God, where many conversations take place between us and God. Weatherhead also says this, time is a university in which we are required to qualify for the next phase. Time is a university in which we are required to qualify for the next phase. Certainly different ways of viewing time. How might God be wanting to use this available time that we have right now to prepare us for our calling, to prepare us for the future? You see, it's quite ironic that Nicodemus was a leader of the Jews. We see that in John 3 verse 1. And he was a teacher of Israel. I mean, we're talking the country, a teacher of a country of Israel. John 3 verses 10. The Greek translation refers to Nicodemus as even a counselor of the Jews. But you see, despite his stature and his education, the truth of who Jesus is continued to elude Nicodemus. Now this applies to us too. Most of us have been privileged to witness God's power in our lives. Maybe right now God is bringing to memory a moment where his power has worked in your life and in my life. Yet we still struggle to fully comprehend Jesus' calling on our lives, particularly during the time of lockdown. This is why this available time in lockdown is so vitally important to Christians. God is seeking our attention. It's ironic that Jesus often speaks to us through the uneducated or the lowly members of society. Jesus can even speak to us through a child. 1 Corinthians 1 verses 27 says this, but God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of this world to shame the strong. How is God speaking to us during this time of lockdown? Are we being dismissive of his voice because it's not coming to us in a way that we deem appropriate? What message are we missing when we block our ears to scripture, when we block our ears to truth. Nicodemus comes across as a person with initiative, someone who was intent on resolving the conflicting thoughts in his mind. So often we have conflicting thoughts about God in our mind, but we don't take the time to resolve those thoughts. We just give up and say, well, it's just too difficult and, and we walk away from it. But Nicodemus must be commended for trying to resolve those issues. The available time that we have now during lockdown is a tremendous opportunity for us to explore and work through the questions and the matters of our lives with Jesus. Perhaps matters that we've left on the shelf for many years this is providing us with a wonderful opportunity to seek God's wisdom on the questions, the doubts that we have. You may be wondering, but Iris, if I bring my questions to Jesus, if I bring my doubts to Jesus, how is he going to respond to me? Maybe you're concerned that if you bring your doubts and questions that God will be angry with you or dismissive of you. Well, Jesus will respond in the same way that he responded to Nicodemus by repeatedly providing us with the answers. But yes, the deal. Jesus will give us the answers, but are we willing to hear them? Sometimes the answer is no. Sometimes the answer is yes. And sometimes the answer is wait. Nicodemus refused to entertain the mystery of God's ways during his dialogue with Jesus, which meant that he remained lost in his understanding of God. We must open, be open to hearing an answer that we may not want to hear. 
Because even though that's difficult, ultimately God's answers will lead us to a place of freedom and peace. We always have the choice to either wallow in doubt or to earnestly seek God's answers in our lives. We always have that choice. There is a sense right now that God is preparing all Christians for a global awakening of sorts or a global revival of sorts after the coronavirus has passed. I'm hearing this from various Christian leaders around the world, and it could be true. It's the sense that people are having. Think about this. Like never before, the gospel is spreading far and wide to every nation during the months of lockdown. God seems to be preparing the world and his followers for a fresh outpouring of the Holy Spirit across the whole earth. Jesus may be preparing us to witness to the power of God like never before, but we need to be ready so that we can recognize when it happens and that it is Jesus, so that the darkness and the sense of powerlessness can be lifted from our lives, from the earth as well, and replaced with true spiritual vision and insight into God's future plans for us, for the world. The text that follows on from Nicodemus shows us how Jesus expresses his frustration that people will only believe in him if they see signs and wonders. We see this in John 4 verse 48. This frustrates Jesus. Now this coincides with Nicodemus' barrier to seeing who Jesus is, despite his own admission that Jesus could not have performed these miracles had God not been with him. John 3 verse 2. The challenge before us is this. Will we only believe that God can work in our lives when an awakening comes? Are we waiting for that before we believe? Or are we willing to believe that God's power right now is available to us before we see the miracles and the signs? Keeping in mind which approach frustrated Jesus. Are we prepared to believe before we see the miracle and the sign? Jesus says in John 3 verses 3 that one must be born from above to know God. This is a process or an event that emanates from a divine source, from Jesus himself. We cannot conjure up our own or the world's rebirth or revival. It has to come from God. Jesus says in verses 3 to 5, no one can see God's kingdom without being born from above. And then he proceeds to say this, No one can enter God's kingdom without being baptized by water and the Holy Ghost. Nicodemus seems to epitomize what Christians today would refer to as a lukewarm Christian or as as a fence setter. A fence sitter, sorry. Nicodemus acknowledges Jesus' divinity, yet he doubts when he says to Jesus, how can these things be? John 3 verse 9. One often assumes that it's only atheists that are doubters. Yet Nicodemus proves that even Christians, those who profess to believe in Jesus, continue to live in doubt. Where do you sit on the issue? Where do I sit on the issue? Who do we say Jesus is? Do we choose to believe in him and the promises in scripture? Or do we choose to continue living in doubt? There is great value in this time of lockdown. Are we going to choose to feel frustrated and powerless? Or are we going to use this time to grow in our faith by spending quality time with God? 
where we truly seek his answers to our problems. This time of isolation is a time to experience God's Holy Spirit's comfort and peace in the midst of the storm. What approach will we choose to take when we view being at home and isolated because of coronavirus? What approach will we take? Let us choose to look back on this period of coronavirus lockdown time as a period where we grew in our relationship with God, where we became filled with His discernment of the future and where we gave God our time in exchange for His grace. Nicodemus sought to spend uninterrupted time with Jesus to seek the truth. Every Christian, every world leader, every nation would do well to do the same right now. I conclude with an excerpt from Weatherhead's Time with God book. This chapter, this part of the chapter is called The Hour of Knowing. I want you to listen very carefully to this. There comes a moment when we know we must follow this path or marry that girl or choose this job or undertake that training. It is an hour of faith in the midst of frustration. Think of Jesus tied to a carpenter's shop for 20 years when he longed to convey the message that burned brightly in his breast, but his hour had not yet come. Then came God's moment. Jesus was free to be all he had within him to be, and all the years of monotonous labor would prove an asset in his opportunity. For us all, God's moment comes. When God puts his hand on your shoulder and says, Now I want you. And in that hour of knowing, everything born, suffered or endured, all the frustration and all the pain will prove to have been frozen assets which in our hour of destiny will find their place in a plan, in God's plan. Let us pray. Gracious and all-knowing God, our lives and times are in your hands. We pray that you will give us the endurance and resilience that we need to quieten ourselves so that we can dialogue with you in a deep and fresh way in the coming weeks and months. We ask, Lord, that this period of lockdown will not be a waste of time, but that you will transform these moments and these days into a room of preparation for the calling that you have on our lives. We surrender ourselves to hear your still small voice and to follow as you guide and lead us. In Jesus' name, Amen. We are now going to share in communion. If you don't have your bread and water or wine or juice with you, I would recommend stopping the video getting those items, and then we will share in communion together. I'll see you soon. The peace of the Lord be with you, and also with you. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sins and seek to live in peace with one another. Be present, risen Lord Jesus, as you were with your disciples, and make yourself known to us in the breaking of the bread. Amen. 
Jesus Christ, on the night that he was betrayed, took bread, broke it, saying, This is my body given for you. Take and eat. In the same way he took the cup. This is my blood given for you. Take and drink. For as often as you eat the bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death and resurrection. The body of Christ broken for you. Thank you. The blood of Christ shed for you. The body of Christ broken for you. Thank you. The blood of Jesus shed for you. Thank you. Lord, we thank you for feeding us with your bread of life. We commit ourselves anew to you in this moment. In Jesus' name, amen.